Hello and welcome to the Musical Instrument Investigator. Today we're on the website of Brompton's Auctioneers based in the UK. We're going to have a look at their latest auction which is the fine auction sale that is ending on the 31st of October. So this is one of the high profile Brompton's auctions. It's actually one of the highlights I suppose of the auction uh, calendar worldwide and there's some high profile stuff on this particular auction. Uh, there's 269 lots in this auction so it's pretty big. The buyer's premium is 20%, so whatever the hammer price is, you add 20% on that of that on top as fees. Uh, but um, Brompton's, as with Teresio, have this kind of first in, uh, kind of last out kind of policy. So if you're the first to bid and you end up winning, then you get 2% off that, so it makes it 18% buyer's premium, which can be quite handy if you're kind of purchasing quite a high uh, ticket uh, item. So uh, yeah, as I said, this is a UK based auction. So look at all the terms and conditions. If you're outside of the UK, if you're in Europe or somewhere else in the world, then check the shipping, import, export, any CITES uh, legislation for things that might have kind of bits of uh, tortoise shell or uh, ivory, all of that uh, kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to looking through this catalog. So as I say, it's one of the kind of highlight auctions. Um, so uh, yeah, let's just get on with it. There's quite a lot of uh, things. We should uh, try and speed through it uh, as much as uh, we can. So uh, first lot here, an English silver mount of vinyl bow by W. E. Hills and Sons, estimate two to three thousand. Uh, you can see here they give a bit of uh, condition there. Stick very good, except a small pin crack to the back of head. Uh, frog good, handle with minor wear. I think that they are meaning that there's like a crack here which can sometimes happen when there's a silver face that uh, has been uh, pinned uh, in or it could be a different kind of type of pinning but sometimes there's a pin in the face plate which can cause uh, cracking uh, but yeah there's information here about condition we won't do that on every lot otherwise we'll be here forever but uh, just so that you're aware. So we've got a French nickel mount of violin bow by Marie Louis Pierneau, 1500 to 2000 is the estimate. It's got a certificate of Jean Francois Raffin, and if you're interested in French bows, and that is one of the people that uh, you want to see a certificate from, uh, so that's a good sign. Uh, more things about condition here small grain lift just behind the head. Um, so the camber of the bow needs attention, so all of this stuff you need to bear in mind. German silver mount of violin bow by H.R. Fretschner there, 1200 to 1800. Silver mount of violin bow, possibly French, 6 to 800. French silver mount of violin bow by Alfred Lamy, 5 to 6. It's got a Pierre Guillaume certificate, that's another certificate that you uh, want to look out for when buying a French bow. An English silver and tortoiseshell mount of vinyl bow by Edgar Bishop for W.E. Hills and Sons, three to five there. Um, I am always quite wary of any bows with tortoiseshell or ivory these days. Uh, there's a CITES kind of declaration down the bottom just because it makes travel very difficult. But historically the finest bows had those materials so I can understand why people are still interested in them. A good and interesting violin bow, probably French, second half of the 18th century, two and a half to three and a half thousand there. Uh, stick good with some very minor grain lifts to top stick, cinch up six inch after the frog, handle with some cracks and repairs under the frog, frog good with one small piece of very minor damage to the side of the mortise area. So the open trench frog possibly later, so always worth reading uh, all of the information there. French silver mount of violin bow by Emile Ouchard, two to four there. German silver mount of violin bow, 1200 to 1800. Uh, French nickel mount of violin bow by Antoine Kirtle, 1000 to 1500. Guillaume certificate there. French silver mount of violin bow by Emile Auguste Ouchard, 10 to 15,000. So that's a serious level of bow there. French nickel mount of violin bow by Alfred Lamy, 3 to 4, with a Raffin certificate there. German nickel mount of violin bow by H.R. Fretschner, 1500 to 2000. A French silver mount of vinyl bow by Francois Lot, 1200 to 1800. A good gold and tortoise shell mounted vinyl bow by Georges Emile Bargenet, 6 to 8000. Uh, Raffin certificate is available to purchase, so uh, it doesn't 
come with the certificate so far. Okay. French nickel mounted vinyl bow by Emile Francois Ouchard. Three to four there. Certificate of uh, Raffin again. French silver mounted vinyl bow by Charles Bazat. Two and a half to three and a half thousand there. French silver mounted vinyl bow by Victor Fatigue. Twelve to eighteen thousand. Sold with the certificate of Bernard Millant and a Raffin certificate there. So uh, Bernard Millant was a person that was kind of one of the leading experts. Uh, so his certificates are usually also pretty good. French silver mounted vinyl bow by Jean Joseph Martin after Viome, seven to ten thousand there. Certificate of Stephanie Janssen, Paris 2018. French nickel mounted vinyl bow by Nicolas Simon, Simon Frere, three and a half to four and a half there, Guillaume certificate. French silver mounted vinyl bow by Joseph Arthur Vigneron, three to five, Guillaume certificate there. English silver mounted vinyl bow probably by James Tubbs, two to three. Uh, a small repaired grain lift there. It's got an insurance valuation as well. A French nickel mounted vinyl bow possibly by Charles Nicholas Bazin, two to three. German silver mounted vinyl bow by Albert Nuremberger, six to eight. French nickel mounted vinyl bow by Charles Pacat, twelve to fifteen thousand. Sold with certificate of Salcho and Son, New York, twenty twenty one. French silver mounted vinyl bow after Tort, eight to twelve. French silver mounted vinyl bow by Alfred Lamy Pair, four to six there. French silver mounted vinyl bow by Charles Nicholas Bazar, three to five, Guillaume certificate. French silver mounted vinyl bow by Louis Morison Frere, another Guillaume certificate. English silver mounted vinyl bow by Albert Leeson for W. E. Hills and Sons, two and a half to four and a half there. English silver mounted vinyl bow by W. E. Hills and Sons, two to four. French silver mounted vinyl bow by Eugene Sartori. A uh, certificate of Paul Childs, Montrose 2021, the American uh, kind of bow expert there. French silver mounted vinyl bow by Joseph Vora with a Guillaume certificate, 3 to 5. French nickel mounted vinyl bow by Francois Bazar, 2 to 4. Guillaume certificate there. And a French silver mounted vinyl bow by Alfred Lamy Pair, 7 to 10. Some pretty impressive uh, bows. Oh, we're on to uh, instruments now. A fine Dutch violin by Peter Rumbouts, Amsterdam, circa 1720, 18 to 25,000. Uh, so there's a, the buyer's uh, premium and uh, hammer price there. Scroll later, labelled Andres Amati. Sold a certificate of Jan Strick, Brussels, 2022. Dendro report from Peter Ratcliffe, dates the latest ring at 1688. A possible tree match for an example by Hendrik Jacobs. So that's interesting. Length of the back 359. There's the information there. I believe that I forget this sometimes the exact thing, but I think that Peter Rumbouts was the son in law of um of Hendrik Jacobs and took over the business um after Jacobs. Uh but I could be uh, completely wrong next so I do forget but uh, nevertheless an interesting uh, violin and a lot of these Dutch violins are really quite nice and there was quite an effort uh, in the past to pass these off as uh, Italian because uh, of the kind of the quality of the the workmanship is is very nice and it was fairly easy for people to kind of pass them off as Italian for a period of time but 18 to 25 no bid so far but we're very early on to this auction Fine German violin by Joseph Klotz Mittenwald, 1794, 8 to 10 there. Violin by Otello uh, Radighieri, Modena, 2001, 3 to 4 there. A very fine French violin by Francois Louis Piquet, Paris, circa 1800. Fingerboard with the Hills uh, registration stamp there, 359 length of back. It's got uh, original Hill certificate issued in 1950, describing the violin as being by PK. Has been lost. Oh, it's been lost. Interesting looking uh, violin. Uh, 
really nice back on that forty to sixty thousand. This is one of the kind of top tier uh, French makers. Belgian violin by Nicolas Francois Villon, Brussels circa 1860, 15 to 20 there. 357, length of back. An Italian violin by uh, Davide Negroni, Cremona 2021, 5 to 8,000 there is the uh, estimate. Sold with certificate of the uh, maker. An interesting violin, two to four thousand. I think uh, historically, I've made jokes about Brompton's use of the word "interesting," but uh, being honest, I also use that word quite often. So uh, I can't really say anything against them. But yet, nevertheless, it does look quite interesting. An Italian violin by Ernesto uh, Pavere Ferrara, nineteen twenty-eight, fifteen to twenty thousand is the uh, is the estimate there. A certificate of Florian Leonhard, London 2022. Uh, Not uh, shown there. Fine French violin by Paul Bailey, Paris 1903, a Del Gesù model, 12 to 18,000 there. An Italian violin by Stefano Cogna, Cremona 2021, 5 to 8, with certificate of the uh, maker. Quite a nice back. French violin, second half of the 18th century, three to five, three, six, uh, one length of back. French violin, school of PK, Paris circa 1800, two to four. So a lot more uh, affordable than the actual uh, PK. Uh, three, six, three length of back, repairs to table, ribs, sound, post crack in the table and back. Table attributed to Derezy scroll probably later an italian violin by luigi ocoli pistoia 2018 five to eight to there sold with a certificate of the maker a good violin 1800 to 2200 a violin circa 1930 1200 to 1800 a violin attributed to Emilio Rossi, Piacenza, 1937, 6 to 8,000. An Italian violin, probably Cremona, second half of the 20th century, 3 to 5. With the certificate of Serge Boyer, Paris, 2021. Violin, possibly Italian, circa 1920, 7 to 10. An Italian violin by Niccolo de Bonis, uh, Bisignano, 1975, 5 to 7,000 there. An Italian violin by Emanuele Cotoni, Pistoia, 2022. That's quite a back on that one. So, 358. Interesting looking. 3 to 5. One bid on that already. Let's uh, move on. An interesting violin, first half of the 18th century, 527. Yep, curious looking back there. An English violin by George Crask, circa 1850, four to six thousand pounds. Good old uh, George Crask there. An Italian violin by Enrico Marchetti, Turin, 1921, 25 to 40,000, the estimate. An Italian violin circle of Revolta, first half of the 19th century. I feel that this has been in the auction at least once before, if not twice. 7 to 10, Florian Leonhard certificate there. An English violin by George Crusk, Manchester, circa 1840. Uh, George Crusk again, quite... Uh, well-known uh, maker who made a ridiculous amount of instruments uh, by himself and then a lot of them were finished off by hills after his uh, death french violin by charles j b colin mazam uh, paris 1893 five to seven these are always popular already got a bid a good violin south germany second half of the 18th century four to six labeled 
Vidal. Property of a Gentleman, a fine Italian violin by Michele Platner, Rome, circa 1740, 60 to 80,000, the estimate there. In a fine state of preservation, bearing the original label. Definitely a curious one. Wurlitzer's certificate there from 1938. Definitely one of the more interesting lots. A good French violin, School of Jean Baptiste Viome, circa 1850. 18 to 22, there is the estimate. Definitely looks Viome esque. An Italian violin by Azzo uh, Rovescali, Milan, 1933, 8 to 10. The estimate there. A French violin by a member of the Corsat family from Neuf Chateau, circa 1870, 2 to 4,000. We think these are quite nice French uh, violins. A rare Italian violin by Benedictus Marcini, Rimini, 1716. It's uh, 30 to 40,000 there is the uh, estimate. And lovely back. Varnish of golden brown colour. The violin retains its original neck, which has been re-angled at the heel. The pegs also seem to be original. Wow. Condition is overall and extremely fine. Marcini is a seemingly unknown maker, not recorded, but the Dendro Port of Peter Ratcliffe is available to purchase and details the latest tree, tree ring, 1688 and 1690. Interesting. So that's a bit of a curious one. Amazing uh, scroll, isn't it? Very interesting looking. An Italian violin attributed to Giuseppe Lucci, Rome, 1984, 7 to 10, sold with a certificate of the maker. A good and interesting violin attributed to Giuffredo Rinaldi, 6 to 8. A very interesting violin, probably Mantua, circa 1725, 5 to 7. An interesting violin circa 1850, 1000 to 1500. An Italian violin by Don Nicolo Amati, Bologna, circa 1730, 40 to 60,000. The latest scroll, possibly by Lorenzo Storioni. It's got a Peter Ratcliffe report as well. It's an interesting uh, looking instrument. And moving on, violin circa 1780, 6 to 8 there. An Italian violin by Paolo uh, de Barbieri, Genoa, 1924, 35 to 45,000 there. Fine Italian violin by Gitano Palastri, Bologna, 1937, 20 to 30 there. Three bids on that already, so that's uh, popular. A popular 20th century maker. An Italian violin by Arnaldo Morano, Turin, 1960, 12 to 16 there. An Italian violin by Mario Garda, Mantua, 1986, 8 to 12 there. Uh, with the certificate of uh, the maker. An interesting Italian violin, second half of the 18th century, 7 to 10. With a certificate of Carlson and Newman, Cremona, 2004. Just have a look there. It's probably in Italian. Yep. An Italian volume by Tullio uh, Rovascali, Milan, circa 1930. Five to eight. A violin by Camillo Mandelli, 1944. 18 to 25,000 there. German violin by Leonard Morsiel, Nuremberg, circa 1730, 5 to 7,000, the estimate. An Italian violin by Emilio Bassi, Cremona, 1990, 6 to 10. Fine Hungarian violin by Karl Brandl, Budapest, 1862, 20 to 25,000 there. Uh, Peter Benedict mentions in his book Violin Makers Hung Hungary that Brandel occasionally listed King Stephen as his patron, which this label does. He also mentions that Brandel won a gold medal in London in 1862, the year this violin was made. Interesting. 
an Italian violin by Gitano and Mario Garda, father and son there, second 1950, 18 to 000. Uh, an English violin by Thomas Urquhart, London, 1654, 7 to 10, the estimate. A very interesting early uh, English uh, violin, this by Thomas Urquhart. Uh, don't come up that uh, often, so nice to see that. Already a bid on it, which is not too surprising there, uh, but uh, yep, very interesting. An Italian violin, probably by Rodolfo Fredi, Rome, 1926, six to eight thousand. A violin, eight hundred to uh, twelve hundred. No bids on that so far. Unfortunate cheek patches there. An Italian violin by Vincenzo Sanino, Naples, 1908. Estimates 30 to 40. We've got three bids on that already. An Italian violin by Eugenio Sidersi, Florence, 1961. 10 to 15,000 on that one. Two bids. Violin probably Naples, first half of the 19th century. Five to eight is the uh, estimate. An English violin by Richard Duke, London, circa 1780, four and a half to five and a half there. Lovely uh, back. A violin by Dante Baldoni, Buenos Aires, 1910, three to five. He's got one bid on that already. Good French violin, School of uh, Castagnari, Paris, circa 1760. Two to four on that. A violin, six hundred to a thousand. A rare Spanish violin by Manuel Sencordi, Valencia, seventeen twenty two. I think we saw this in one of the last auctions, and no one uh, bid on it, but always nice to see kind of earlier uh, Spanish uh, instruments there. Five to seven, the estimate. French violin, circa 1840. Four to six is the uh, estimate there. An interesting violin, possibly French, first quarter of the 19th century. Two to three, got one bid on that. Property of a Lady, a very fine Italian violin by Enrico Rocca, Genoa, 1912, 100 to 150,000. So it's one of the high level lots, no bids on it so far. Another kind of highly regarded kind of late 19th, early 20th century uh, kind of maker. Very interesting. French silver mounted viola bow by Benoit Roland, eight to 10,000 uh, there, stamped Roland. I think he's in the US now rather than Paris. An English silver mounted viola bow, probably by Edward Tubbs, five to seven there. Silver mounted violin bow, probably French, 1,000 to 1,500 there. A German silver mounted viola bow by Otto Derschmidt, 600 to 800. French ivory mounted viola bow uh, by Louis Simon Pajot, eight to 12,000 there, certificate of Pierre Guillaume. Stick very good, frog very good, except for two repaired cracks button later. Saying the frog possibly in collaboration with Jude Goyard, sold with the bone button of the period and probably of English origin, as well as a silver reproduction button, CITES restrictions uh, on that. German silver mounted viola bow by H.R. Frechner, 1800 to 2.5. French silver mounted viola bow workshop of JTL, 1500 to 2000. An English silver mounted viola bow by W.E. Hills and Sons, 3 to 5. A Swiss silver mounted viola bow workshop by Johannes Finkel, 1000 to 1500. An English viola by William Glenister, London, 1908, 5 to 7. An Italian viola by Stefano Cogna, Cremona, 1972, 6 to 8. A viola by Martin Hoffmann, Leipzig, circa 1700. This is actually. Uh, an interesting looking instrument, 12 to 18, um, starting bid 10,000, length of back 417, which is uh, quite a good uh, length for a kind of modern interesting uh, instrument. 
interesting uh, f holes there. Looks a little bit. Uh, one looks a bit adjusted there. Uh, but yeah, curious looking uh, instrument that one. Very fine Italian viola by Giovanni Battista Gabrielli, Florence, 1757. 70 to 100,000 there. So viola is in an excellent state of preservation. Length back 395, nice, interesting looking scroll. Property of a Gentleman, an important English viola by Daniel Parker, London, 1714. 120 to 180,000. Already three bids on 120. Uh, length back 409. Original label there, Hill registration, letter from Hills, stuff in the Strad magazine. So uh, I think this is extremely kind of uh, rare. Uh, I'm not sure how many Daniel Parker violas there are, but Daniel Parker probably the most regarded, or one of the most regarded English uh, makers there. So um, yeah, I'm not going to read into all of that, but. Uh, if you follow the link, have a look at what John Dilworth wants to say about this maker. But Daniel Parker, very, very interesting uh, English maker. And I think it's quite rare to see a, see a viola. French silver mounted cellobo by Etienne Pajot, 15 to 18,000, a Raffin certificate. French silver mounted cellobo by Francois Nicolas Vara, 12 to 18. Another Raffin certificate there. An English silver mounted cellobo by James Tubbs, 5 to 7. Oh, something weird happened there. Let's just double check. Okay, that's a bit strange. German gold mounted cello bow by Klaus Grunker, four to six. French uh, silver mounted cello bow by Claude uh, Thomasa, two to four. It's got a Guillaume certificate. German nickel mounted cello bow by Albert Nuremberger, 1500 to 2000. English silver mounted cello bow by Andrew McGill, 1200 to 1800. French silver mounted cello bow by Jules Fatique, 10 to 15,000. Raffin certificate there. English silver mounted cello bow by James Tubbs, 8 to 12. Salcha and Sons certificate. And a certificate of A. Gartsman. English chased gold mounted cello bow by W. E. Hills and Sons, 4 to 6. There you go, it's one bid on that already. A good silver mounted cello bow, probably French, made for George Withers and Sons, 1800 to 2000. French nickel mounted cello bow by Francois Lotte, 1500 to 2000. French silver mounted cello bow, possibly by Morison Frere, 1500 to 2000. A German silver mounted cello bow by Max Kurt Schuster, 800 to 1200. French silver mounted cello bow by Andre Vigneron Fee, 12 to 18,000. A fine French silver mounted cello bow by Francois Nicolas Varat. 8 to 10 there. An English silver mounted cello bow by W.E. Hills and Sons, 2 to 3. An English silver mounted cello bow by John Clutterbuck, 1000 to 1500. A French nickel mounted cello bow by Claude Thomasin, 8 to 10. A Guillaume certificate there, 3 bids. English silver mounted cello bow probably by William Tubbs, 2 to 3. English silver mounted cello bow by W. E. Hills and Sons, eighteen hundred to two and a half. Swiss silver mounted cello bow by Siegfried Finkel, one thousand to fifteen hundred. Klaus Grunker certificate there. French nickel mounted uh, French style double bass bow by Charles Nicolas Bazar, two to three. French silver mounted um, double bass bow, possibly by a member of the Bazar family, one thousand to fifteen hundred. A French nickel mounted double bass bow by Georges Barjonet. 800 to 1200, Guillaume certificate there. French nickel mounted French style double bass bow, possibly by a member of the Bazaar family, two to three thousand. Unusual to have so many bass bows and also have them with bids on it. That's kind of a bit interesting. French nickel mounted uh, French style double bass bow by Roger Lott there, 800 to 1200. French silver mounted double bass bow by Charles Bacat, 10 to 12,000. A Raffin certificate there. Yeah, really is someone ordering a lot of. Uh, Base base there. A fine English cello by Betts, London, first half of the 19th century, 20 to 30,000. There's one bid on that already. An English cello, school of and possibly by James and Henry Banks, Salisbury of London, circa 1810. 8 to 12. A cello, probably Italian, second half of the 19th century, 3 to 5. 
a good cello Saxony circa 1790 two to three thousand on that an English cello by John Morrison London 1815 eight to ten on that receipt of Martin Godleman Middlesex 1989 a Polish cello by uh, Gregor's Bobak uh, Nauri Targ 2013 after Peter Guarneri of Venice 7 to 10 an English cello by James and Henry Banks Salisbury circa 1800 25 to 35,000 there certificate of John Dilworth included a lot of Banks related uh, things in this auction an Italian cello by Riccardo Bagonzi, Cremona, 1999, 15 to 20,000 there. Two bids on that. An Italian cello by Luigi Ocoli, Pistoia, 2016, 10 to 15. An Italian cello attributed to Anselmo Coletto, Turin, 1945, 8 to 12 on that one. An Italian cello by Mario Girardi. Uh, Milan 1928, 40 to 50,000 there. Certificate of Eric Blot, Cremona. An English cello by Thomas Kennedy, London, circa 1810, 20 to 30 there. With the repairs label of Hawks and Sons. Quite a striking uh, back on that one. An Italian cello, probably Naples, circa 1800, 15 to 20,000 there. An English cello, School of Betts, London, circa 1810, 12 to 16. An English cello, London, circa 1780, 10 to 15,000. Branded Longman, Lukey and Co. on the back. The ex Victor Manuel Cortez, a fine Italian cello by Ferdinand Galliano, Naples, second 1760, 300 to 400,000. So that is a substantial instrument there. I sold with a certificate from Hills and Sons, 1923. Condition report uh, available uh, upon request. And it's just a bit about the. Uh, the owner about Manuel Cortez there, but uh, I'll let you read that yourselves. French double bass by Juste Derazi Mircourt, circa 1880, 8 to 12,000 there. That's the uh, estimate. Interesting lion's head on that. The base was probably commissioned by an English military regiment, hence the lion head finial and the coat of arms. Mm, very interesting. French double bass workshop of uh, just Derezy, Mirkor, circa 1870, 8 to 12. An Italian guitar by Gennaro Fabricatore, Naples, circa 1828 to 10. It's an interesting uh, guitar that I think we saw in the last auction, or one similar, one of the kind of fathers of uh, romantic guitar uh, making there. An Italian guitar by Raphael and Antonio Galliano, Naples, circa 1830. Uh, one way to get a cheaper Galliano there, four to six thousand. This may also have been in the previous uh, auction. Very fine and red German piano keyed guitar by Matthias Neuner, Mitterfeld, 1810, 10 to 15,000. It's an interesting looking one. You, you definitely don't see these uh, keyed uh, guitars uh, very often, so almost a museum uh, piece there so very uh, interesting guitar is sold with a copy of the Met Metropolitan Museum of Arts journal which explains the uh, keyed feature a very interesting lot uh, right back on to bows again a fine French silver mount of violin bow by Joseph Henri 28 to 32,000 well millant certificate there so it's uh, very substantial French silver mounted violin bow by Alfred Lamy, 7 to 10. Sold a certificate of Paul Childs. Okay. French silver mounted violin bow by Pierre Malin, 3 to 4, with a Guillaume certificate. An English silver and aluminium mounted violin bow by W.E. Hills and Sons when they started doing this aluminium button for some reason, 2 to 3 on that. Silver mounted violin bow, possibly by Jean Dominique Adam, 1200 to 1800 there. Silver mounted violin bow, 700 to 1000. 
French silver mounted violin by attributed to Claude Joseph von Claus, 4 to 6 there. French nickel mounted violin bow by Georges Bargenet, 3 to 5. A French nickel mounted violin bow by Emile of Francois Huchard, 2 to 3. A German gold mounted violin bow by a member of the Fretchner family there, 2 to 4. Certificate of Eric Lachmann, Los Angeles. Attributing it to a French maker, that's uh, unfortunate. Silver Mount of Vinebo, possibly workshop of Giuseppe Lucci, 1500 to 2000 there. German Silver Mount of Vinebo by Hermann Richard Fretschner, 1000 to 1500. German Gold Mount of Vinebo by Otto Derschmidt, 800 to 1200. French Nickel Mount of Vinebo by Francois Picat, 10 to 15,000. Certificate of Salcher and Sons, New York, another kind of American uh, kind of bow experts there. English silver mount of vinyl bow by W. E. Hills and Sons, two to three. French silver mount of vinyl bow by Louis Bazart, 1200 to 1800. French nickel mount of vinyl bow, School of Francois Picat, four to six. French silver mount of vinyl bow by Claude Thomasin, made for J and A Beer, three to five. A French silver mount of vinyl bow by Alfred Lamy, three to five. Uh, let's just check, it's going a bit slow there. French Nickel Mount of Vinyl Bow by Moisson Frere, 1400 to 1800, Raffin certificate there. French Silver Mounted Vinyl Bow made for Charles Bouthold, 1800 to 2.5 there. French Silver Mount of Vinyl Bow by Louis Bazaar, 2.5 to 3.5. German Silver Mount of Vinyl Bow by Paul Weidhaus, 2 to 3. Interesting Gold Mount of Vinyl Bow, probably German, 1200 to 1800. French nickel mount of vinyl bow by Charles Bazar, 6 to 100 to 1000. A French silver mount of vinyl bow by Jacques Lefleur, 10 to 15,000 there. A French nickel mount of vinyl bow by Nicolas Maline, 3 to 4. English silver and tortoiseshell mount of vinyl bow by W. E. Hills and Sons, 2 to 4. German silver mount of vinyl bow by H. R. Fretchner, 800 to 2200. Nickel mounted vinyl bow, probably French after Vion, 6 to 100 to 1000. Uh, right, and then we're on to instruments again. A fine Italian violin by Leandro Biziak Milan, 1990, after Montagnana, 50 to 60,000. There, no bids on it so far. An American violin by Sergio Perison, Philadelphia, 1968, after GB G, G. Guadagnini, 20 to 30,000. There. Certificate of William Moaning and Son, Philadelphia. An Italian violin, probably by Luigi Piattellini, Florence, circa 1770, 15 to 20,000 there. Interesting looking instrument. Scottish violin by Matthew Hardy, Edinburgh, circa 1820, 5 to 7 there. A lot of these Hardy instruments have really kind of striking uh, backs to them. French violin by Charles J. B. Colin Mazat Pere, Paris 1882, 3 to 5,000. An Italian violin by Gaetano Garda, Mantua, 1950, 30 to 40,000 there. An Italian violin by Alfredo Contino, Naples, 1922, 25 to 35 there. A fine French violin, possibly by Claude Puret, Paris, first half of the 18th century, 15 to 20,000 there. An Italian violin by Luigi Occello, uh, Milan, circa 1950, 4 to 6. An Italian violin by Enrico Marchetti, Turin, circa 1920, 40 to 60 on that one. An Italian violin workshop of Giuseppe uh, Di Sciato, Naples, 1887, 7 to 10,000 on that one. An interesting violin, possibly Italian second half of the 18th century, 5 to 6. 4.5, uh, sorry, 5 to 6 is the estimate, 4.5 is the starting bid. Let's have a quick look in a bit more detail there. Uh, an Italian violin by Otello uh, Radighieri, Modena, 2003, 
it's four to six on that one. Violin probably Turin, second nineteen forty seven, three to five. A violin two to four. An Italian violin by Lorenzo Ventapane, Naples, eighteen twenty, fifty five to sixty five thousand is the uh, estimate there. Interesting maker Ventapane. An Italian violin, probably by Pietro Giovanni Mandigaza, Milan, circa 1780, 25 to uh, 35,000 there, uh, the estimate. The Italian backs and ribs, possibly by another hand. The table is probably by Pietro Mandigaza, prob uh, possibly made for the ribs and body of an earlier Italian violin. Okay, so that's interesting. An Italian violin by Giovanni Gheda, Ivrea, 1902. 10 to 15 is the estimate on that. An English violin by Woodward, Birmingham, circa 1820. 3 to 5. A French violin, second half of the 19th century. 1500 to 2000. An interesting violin, 5 to 800 there. This one did actually seem quite interesting, and I noticed that as soon as the bidding opened on this, there was already a few bids, already up to 5 bids on that, so I think that will do well in the auction. An Italian violin by Alfredo Contino, Naples 1915, 30 to 40,000 uh, there. An Italian violin by Armando Grilletti, Milan 1981, quite a striking back on that, 4 to 6. A violin circa 1850 after Magini, 17, uh, sorry, Two to four thousand starting bid is seventeen hundred. The uh, scroll has been uh, very worn on uh, one side. An Italian violin, probably by Vincenzo Iorio, uh, Naples, circa like eighteen forty, twenty to thirty thousand. There is the uh, estimate. An Italian violin, probably Naples, first of the half of the nineteenth century, six to eight. Got letters from Dykes and Sons, London. Dimensions have been altered by Dykes. Interesting. A French violin workshop of just Derazy Mirco, circa 1878, 3 to 5. An English violin by George uh, Mason, London, 1922, 1200 to 1800. A strong varnish there. An Italian violin by Carlo Antonio Testore, Milan, circa 1740, 45 to 55,000 there, with a certificate of Jean-Jacques Rampel, 2016. Interesting looking uh, violin. And there's the certificate. French violin by Gander Bernadelle, Paris, 1870, 20 to 30. The estimate on that. German violin by Joseph uh, Kantusha, Mittenwald 1981, 10 to 15,000. French violin workshop of Caressa and Francais, 1905, 4 to 5,000 on that. An Italian violin by Romeo Antionazzi, Milan, circa 1905, 40 to 60,000 is the uh, estimate on that. Has a certificate of uh, Dimitri Gindin, uh, London, 2016. Length of back 355. So that's uh, another curious uh, one there. Then Italian violin by Marcello Villa, Cremona, 2012. Got 8 to 10 on that. Certificate of the maker. And an Italian violin attributed to and probably by Eligio. Uh, Puccioni in Poli 1929. I'm probably once again really destroying uh, these names, so apologies for that. Uh, very interesting looking button there. Four to six is the uh, estimate. French violin by Jules Joseph Grandjean, Mirco, circa 1850. Four to six. An Italian violin by Leandro Biziac, Milan, 1887. 40 to 50,000 there, 
sold with certificate of Andreas Voivod 2013. German Violin by Ernst Heinrich Roth, Mark Nikerken, 1937, 2-3 is the estimate. Violin after Pedrazzini, nice back, 1200-1800 uh, on that. A Violin, 800-1000 is the estimate. Property of the late Frach uh, Barbarian, a very fine Dutch violin by Hendrik Jacobs, Amsterdam, circa 1700, 50 to 60,000 there. It's got a Wurlitzer registration internally. Certificate of Rambert Wurlitzer, 1948. So that's a bit of information about the previous uh, owner there. The ex Cesar, an Italian violin, probably Genoa, circa 1760, 20 to 30,000. Certificate of Peter Pryor. So, it's interesting there. 20 to 30. An interesting violin, possibly Italian, second half of the 19th century, 7 to 10. A violin school of Antianazi, Milan, second 1900, 6 to 8. A fine French violin by Claude Puret. Paris 1725, 20 to 30,000 of that. William Lewis uh, certificate, 362 uh, length of back. French Violin School of PK, Paris circa 1810, 7 to 10,000 there. A good French Violin School of Cossa, 2 to 4. An interesting violin, probably German, circa 1860, 1800 to 2200. A Swiss violin by Adolf Rohnig, Zurich, 1937. Don't see too many Swiss ones, 1500 to 2000. A violin, 800 to 1200 there. Interesting looking violin. French violin by Pierre Pacquerel, Nice, 2nd, 1863, 20 to 30,000 there. It's already got bids of 18,000. French violin by Nicolas Chapuis, Paris, circa 1770, 6 to 8,000. I um, do like the work of uh, Chapuis. French violin by Georges Cohen and Fields, Lyon, 1943, 3.5 to 4.5 and a half there. French violin attributed to and probably by Emile Menesson, Reims, 1904. Two to four on that. A fine Italian violin by Gennaro Vinaccia, Naples, circa 1770, 70,000 to uh, 90,000 there. Sold with certificate of JNA beer, 2004. The Vinaccia family, interesting family, they're also quite highly regarded for their mandolins as well. A very fine Italian violin by Niccolo Galliano, Naples, 1780, 70 to 100,000 uh, on that one. Um, Dendro report uh, there, it's got hill number on the fingerboard. Uh, let's just say, significant matches with violins by Niccolo Galliano and other Neapolitan makers. Got a certificate of hills and sons. A very fine French violin by Jean-Baptiste Fillon, Paris, circa 1845. 120 to 160,000 are there. One bid already. I think Viome is the person at the moment that everyone's interested in. Certificate of uh, Jacques Francais there. This was the main instrument of, of Evelyn Chadwick there. So Viome always popular. An Italian violin by Niccolo Galliano, Naples, circa 1735. 150 to 180,000 there. Sold with a copy of the certificate of John Friedrich uh, and Brothers, December 1919. Property of a Lady, a very fine Italian violin by Carlo Fa Ferdinando Landolfi, Milan, 1766. 250 to 350,000 is the estimate. The profu profuse varnish of a rich golden red colour. Interesting instrument there. 
sold with two certificates of Max Muller Amsterdam 1933 and 1972. Dendro report as well. Some interesting matches. Property of a Lady, an important Italian violin by Francesco Ruggieri, Cremona, 1670. Uh, no estimates there, but starting bid is 270,000. So it's uh, definitely a high level of instrument. Fingerboard has the hills mark as well. And a fine Italian violin by Niccolo Galliano, Naples, 1777. Estimates 220 to 260,000 there. Fine looking uh, violin. It's got a certificate from Florian Leonhard, 2014, and a, Wurl a copy of a Wurlitzer certificate. And I think this is it, the star attraction here. The X Vigla, an important Italian violin by Joseph Fidis Andrea Guarneri, Cremona, 1710. No estimate, but starting bid is half a million, so that's pretty significant there. Uh, sold with certificate of Hills and Sons in 1923 and Moaning and Sons 1985. Length of back 352. So that is, that's the final lot in the auction and that is the uh, the prestige uh, instrument there. So definitely very interesting. Well, that is the end of the Bromptons auction. Uh, we've just gone through that really quickly, to be honest. Uh, we could do it a bit more in depth, but then this video would probably be two or three hours long. So I've uh, just quickly skimmed over bits just to give you a rough idea and to capture some of the images for uh, the future as these auctions tend to sometimes disappear afterwards and we lose all reference. So it's good to see them. Uh, if you have any questions or thoughts, just let me know. I'll put a link in the description as always. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for uh, watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye. Many thanks for tuning in to the Musical Instrument Investigator. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please like, uh, subscribe and turn on notifications and watch out for the next video coming soon.